I won't be a slave. Oh, didn't you know never trust the wicked when the cards are on the table? They tell wickedy lies and fables. Unable to be dropping the prophecies like we be. Flipping off through the scriptures like Exodus 15 and 3. Ooh, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. How could you think to even add much more? Or is you lacking like understanding? Because these pork chop preachers be lying but still demanding. Looting money from your pockets, though. But never to teach you when they reach you that the son of God's a so called Negro, a bully gray afro and dark. That's when we step in to tear these lies apart. Scripture after scripture. Let it rip you if you wicked. The Israelites are coming from east into Pacific. Scholars and prolific with the scriptures like Solomon. All praises to the most high that he chose us. Now we can. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. As it is written. The truth is sitting inside of a simple mind Of a holy nation that doesn't know that they're divine So let us take this time to run the line on the future Prophecy of how the devil seduced you There's more religions than they're all pigeon dung But none of these religions can tell you where you truly come from This message is for the ones they call minority In the U.S. they get those up under Satan's authority The last majority of my people don't have the true Knowledge and understanding of the Bible that they're the Jews That's right, Christ and all the prophets have a dark complexion So any foes of the facts don't have no protection We make connection with the past with knowledge of the ever-present Bible to help my people with their suicidal tendencies because they tend to be led astray. We're looking for that one trait, headed for the payday. Here's a little song about the hidden truth. Come on. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. It's real. Friday nights, uh, which is 9 to, uh, to, uh, 12. to 12. Then we have Sabbath morning classes. We go over the Hebrew, which is uh, from 8 o'clock to 12, uh, about 12, 1, 1 ish, you know, depending how brothers go. Right, right. Uh, you guys can check us out. We're on uh, YouTube at ISBHPK. Check out our, our previous shows. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and email us. Uh, they can email us at Hidden oh, Truth. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can either email us at thehiddentruth12.com, uh, and that's also our website, so you can check us out there, okay? And uh, Ustream, uh, we do we do want brothers and sisters to come in for classes, but there's a lot of brothers and sisters out of town uh, that want to, to get classes. We have us uh, we have classes on Ustream, and uh, those are also on our class nights. Uh, you know, the best we can do with that Ustream video, we, we, we try to do our best. But we also have old videos on there of classes, which which go into a little more than what we go on to the cable show. Right, right. Because this cable show is only an hour. It, it goes so quick, we can only touch on a few scriptures here and there. So um, tonight we're talking about the uh, this, this question slash statement about the camp about, you know, do, do we need to be in a camp? Uh, do we need to, uh, uh, you know, that you, you see that on Facebook or on, um, on YouTube about, oh, you brothers must be in a camp. Right, it's like you know, it's a necessity to be in a camp and stuff like that. R r well, they, they say it in a way to, like, downgrade the unity. Right, right. And right. I guess this, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that goes there. But uh, to d downgrade the unity of the, uh, the brotherhood and the gathering. You know, so we wanted to touch on that. I wanted to touch on that scripture tonight. You know, I mean, I guess we all wanted to touch on this scripture so we can uh, get some understanding. Right. You know what I mean? Because uh, the, 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 uh, the thing is that, is it necessary? You know what I mean? And I think that's where brothers, a lot of young brothers lack understanding about the necessity of gathering ourselves together. So, you know, going to Zephaniah 2 and 1, and uh, this is one of the scriptures that, is, is said, oh, well, really, uh, this is not for now. Hmm. But as we go into it and we read it, we're going to find out it's totally, totally for now right. as we go into these prophecies and everything. So read that really quick. 
Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Uh -huh. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. And this is the, the one we use to tell brothers, let's, let's come together. Uh, we're supposed to be joining in, in certain camps. And, and like we always say, it's not about just uh, our camp. You have, uh, you do have good examples, <laughs> you know, and I got to be careful with that too because, yes, you got a lot of brothers that are wild out there and, you know, you have a lot of brothers that uh, are barely learning and, and, and they have a zeal, right. but they don't actually have the skill. And, uh, you know, what they do is they go off of what they see on YouTube, hmm. you know, and, and, and our thing is that we, we have to... Uh, we have to be careful because a lot of brothers on YouTube is picking up on how to teach. Right. You know, and they're not necessarily coming into class. So, you know, well, we, we've touched on that before, too, you know, about coming into class and, and getting the, the whole thing, the whole experience of learning about yourself, the inward man, you know, as opposed to just getting the knowledge. Right, it's kind of like watching karate videos and and the difference between watching karate videos and actually going to karate classes. Right. You know I mean? One one you should actually hit the streets with. Right, right, <laughs> you know I mean? right. And uh, the other one's just imitation. Right. You know, well, yeah, I, I understand that. We need, to, we need to definitely hit that. Right, right. So that's what the Most High is reminding us. Read it again. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Uh-huh. Gather yourselves together. Yay, gather together, O nation, not desire. And you can tell the ones that don't understand because you, you, that's where they stopped. Right. They read the first verse and, uh, you know, or we brought it out and then they said, oh, that ain't for now. And they didn't understand that. We read the whole chapter. Right. Mm -hmm. We read and we got the full understanding because right, right. they say, oh, that's not for now. That's not for now. Mm -hmm. Well, let's read the scripture. Let's go ahead and read down. Go ahead. Verse 2, uh -huh. before, the, before the decree bring forth. Wait a minute. What decree are we talking about? Hmm. You understand? Hmm. And that's what we got to go into the scriptures and, and go into. But it, it tells us in Zephaniah. Yeah, read. Before the day pass as the chaff. Wait a minute. We're supposed to come together after everything is destroyed? Before the day pass as the chaff. Uh, wait, uh, wait a minute. As Christ is delivering us up, we're going to get right? Before the day pass as the chaff. And I think that's the basic misconception hmm. and uh, the, the lack of understanding a lot of brothers and sisters got that are making this statement that we're touching on here today about a camp or the unity. Because that's what they're saying. They're basically saying that the unity is not necessary. Right. That they're, they're, oh, we can go and do, deal like church. You know what I mean? So you brothers and sisters, our number's up there. If y'all have any questions on this, comments on this topic, uh, you know, uh, we are live here today. But if you catch it on YouTube, you can still call us or text us because uh, we do answer. Uh, and you brothers and sisters that are familiar with calling us, we do answer your questions and uh, address your uh, questions, you know, at any time. So feel free to call us on this topic. But, it, you know, we're talking about is it necessary to join a body right. or join a camp or to deal, uh, to, to establish unity? Hmm. You know, and look at the words we're using because that's what it is. Right. It's not just about, oh, I'm in a camp. It's about we're supposed to establish the unity to come together and learn one another. And like, you know, like a, a lot of people like to say, build. You know what I mean? Because you, right. you would not, you, you, you would not <laughs> understand yourself until you're able to practice these spiritual essentials. Yeah, and I think that it will help with the overall view of, um, you know, Hebrew Israelites because, you know, um, gathering ourselves together is is also a spiritual view. You know, right. Because how the other nations look at us, we all are affi affiliated, whether we believe it or not. So yeah. in that affiliation, we right. need to be in unity. There you go. They, you know what? And that brings me to this. Go to Deuteronomy. Where is it? 28, the, the eye should be evil. Right. Because this is one of the, the biggest, just on what you were just saying right there, uh, one of the biggest curses is that we can't get together. You know what I mean? We can't unify, that we have hatred towards one another. So, and we're going to get to uh, where this is coming from, because we know the ones that are making this statement, and we say it all the time in class. It's most likely 30-year-old men, baby boys at home with their mom, you know, uh, playing video games, blaming the white man, uh, blaming the white man for everything. And uh, and and they don't want to get off their ass 
teach their wife, teach their kids, teach their family, uh, stand up for their nation. They're, they're, they're most likely those type of individuals. Oh, we don't need a camp. We do, uh, oh, you must be in a camp. Like it's funny or it's like uh, right. it's uh, some derogatory to say. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's where the ignorance comes in, the, the lack of understanding and erring through the scriptures okay. and also the experience. Because I would not know how to really be a man unless, yeah, I can read the scriptures about a husband. I can read the scriptures on how to uh, guide my house. But what about the, the, the details within that when I fall in these situations, right. you know, uh, to, to my pride? Because a lot of brothers think, well, you know what? Uh, I'm the man of the house. I don't have to do nothing. I could just be the lion. Right. Right. Not knowing the greater they are, the more you have to humble yourself to your wife, to your kids, and able to teach them and be an example. Right, right. I'm not going to know that unless a brother had told me and showed me. Hmm. You know, I, there's a lot of things we read in the scriptures, but there's also experience that's going to teach us. Right, right. And this is the situation where we have Elijah and Elisha. Right. You know, Elijah just, uh, Elisha didn't say, you know what, Elisha, could I get a double portion? Yeah, appreciate that. Bam, double portion and be on thy way. Right. He had to follow him. Right. Yeah, to okay. be actually in there, in there with him, experiencing yeah. the same things he was experiencing. Right. Watching how he dealt with it. Right. And then following in the same path. Right. And they, they illustrate that in that story. Right. You know, when he, he, smites the, he smites the Jordan, it parts in half and he goes over. He smites it with his, with his coat. Right. And then when, when Elisha has to go back alone, he takes the same cloak and does the exact same thing. Yeah. And it parts the exact same way. And same not, effect. Not, not only that, but let's look at uh, the Elijah and Elisha. Let's look at the 12 apostles. Let's right. bring it back. Bring it from the Old to the New Testament. Right, right. You know what I mean? The Christ said, uh, be ye followers of me. He said, uh, stop what you're doing and I'll make you fishers of men. Right. It wasn't like, you know what, meet me out there uh, every Saturday <laughs> on the seashore. Right. And then we'll be, I'll be out there dropping the word. Right, right. It said they stopped doing what they were doing and had to follow. Right. right. And this is where, you know, uh, you know, I guess we're jumping way ahead, but this is where a, what a lot of brothers don't want to do. Right. And because it's not women. You know, the, the, the brothers, the, the man, when he gets the knowledge, he wants to, he wants to proclaim it upon his rib right. and, and lay the burden on his rib like, you got to follow me. You got to be in order. Right. But guess what? I'm going to sit on my ass right. and not have a backbone and right. use the scriptures to get you in order. Right. But when it's time for me to get in order and, and work with the brothers and have to be humble right. like you, I don't want to show that example nor do I want to do it. Right, right. You're, you're, so this is this is where we we know where that's coming from. The yeah. the uh, you know uh, we don't need a camp ideology, right? right? The, the other aspect is fear. You know, right. that, that's a lot of responsibility. Are you responsible for other men's spirits? You know, if if they think this far, right? You know, the, the, you're responsible for other people's spirits. You're responsible for your family, uh, anybody that's under you. If you right. become, if you get rank, uh, the people you teach, you, you got to make sure you don't just speak out of your own mind. You have right. to speak the word of the Most High and and clarify it. Right. And not mess up because you right. can lead somebody astray. Right. So that fear, you know, what I mean, just being a a, a coward. Uh, it's probably good that they sit at home because they, they <laughs> that you don't take a coward to war. Right. This right. is a spiritual warfare and right. we don't want cowards in war anyway. Mm -hmm. But we would rather the coward stay at home and shut his mouth and not be on <laughs> Facebook, or YouTube, YouTube, you know what I mean? You Preaching know, against the doctrines that right. they see the brothers with a backbone teaching. Right, you know exactly. What I mean? That's what gotta be shut down, is that you got all these cowards trying to nitpick <laughs> at the people with backbone. Right, right, you know right. I mean? They're they're not doing nothing but just sitting there trolling. <laughs> Right. You know, I don't got no friends and nobody, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to... It's like movie critics. <laughs> you, know? yeah. it's like you, you ain't making no movies. But right. you sit there and thumbs up and thumbs down. Right, and, right. You, know you don't mean? know what it takes. Right. Let's read that real quick, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 54. Uh-huh. So that the man that is tender among you... And, we, and we, I'm going here because one of the great curses was that... Uh, the, or I should say, this is one of the great curses. Right, right. Go ahead. And very delicate. Right. So when it says tender and delicate, it's not saying he was a homo. He was wearing tight jeans. Mm, right. it, it, or, you know what I mean? He's effeminate. What it was saying is that, uh, you, you know, we had a demeanor about us not to walk around with this evil look and evil spirit to now I want to challenge you right. every time. I see you with your woman, nigga. She look good. Right. You know, that, that's, this, is, this is the tender and delicate 
righteousness that our people lost. Right, right. You know, and, and it's what we call today hating on each other. Okay. You know what I mean? Our people hate on each other. Right. And um, it, it's bred in us. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what they have to do. They have to, you say apple, I say banana. You say we have to gather ourselves together. And, and, and instead of them studying and seeing that it's not us saying it, right. because that's what it is. It's, it's just hate towards each other <laughs> instead of really going in the Bible and saying, hold on, wait a minute. Huh, I, I need to check that out right. before I speak, <clears throat> before I open up my mouth. Because it, everybody got the right to say something. But before you open up your mouth, let's go to the Bible and find out. Right. Is this what the Most High required? Right, right. You know, so read that. His eye shall be evil toward his brother. So one of the great curses is that his eye was going to be evil towards each other. And, and that's where you get the trolls and, and you, you know, uh, you say apple, I say banana. I want to be against everything that you're talking about because I want to shine. And they think, they think and th another topic we're going to hit on is that uh, you, got a lot of, uh, you got a lot of old school brothers, man. It's sad to say that that are vainglorious, that are puffing themselves up. Right, right. They're trying to sign or be somebody. That's well, listen, if you're not what ISBHPK, right. then you're not in the truth. Or you're not, it's like, <laughs> like, really, brother? Like, wait a, wait a yeah. minute. Uh, you know what yeah, I mean? Right. If you're not rolling with us, you're not down with Christ. It's right. like, no, hold on a second. The scripture says, up. let no man despise thy youth. Right, right. Yeah. Not only that, but the scripture says, Make th not thyself of the number. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, so, you know, that's, uh, you, know, you know, that's why uh, we try, and, you know, I'm not saying we're perfect to, to promote the unity, try to promote us um, uh, uh, brothers and sisters gathering not only in our camp, but in other camps right. that, you know, and when I say in other camps, the ones that are, you know, the ones that are teaching the truth, not talking about raping women. Because right. that's not in the Bible. You just lack, you lack understanding right, right. very much. You just go read through the chapter. It tells you the difference between when you rape, just in the few verses of above, if you rape as opposed to you enticing a woman. Right. You know what I mean? We're not talking about those yelling out, calling our people bitches and whores. And, well, that, you know, there's a way to do things. Right, right. You know what I mean? There's a way to do things. And, yes, it does say rebuke them sharply. And we talked about this in class the other night. But it also tells you that you're supposed to try to win your people. Right. Speak softly to thy people. So it says rebuke them sharply, but it also says the other scriptures too. And that's where these brothers and uh, brothers lack. And, right. and you got the YouTubers, the trolls getting on there. And guess what? They're learning that. Mm -hmm. And they want to go out and not really be studied and not really get in the scriptures and think it's about yelling at people. Right, right. It's not about that. It's about teaching our people raising them up and understand that not saying going out there with a nice tight white suit and being effeminate we're not talking about that either but also to be able to have the balance uh to to teach our people because there's a lot of our people that really want to learn yeah. you see a lot of these youtubes there's people that want to stand there and learn <laughs> but the brother so he's so much on fire he's not giving them a chance yeah. it's like hold on brother he he's ready he's willing now Go ahead and talk to him, teach him. But it's not, it's like, no, I'm going to blaze everything up in the way. And it's like, whoo, it's great. It's like, hold up, step back and calm down. Right, right. You know what I mean? And, and um, that I think there's a balance that needs to be made. Going back to the point, we're talking about this, this uh, the camp thing. Is it necessary to join a camp? Yes, it is. Because uh. when you do, your, your elders are going to be able to teach you the, the difference to control your anger. A brother, a brother amongst you that is good at patience. Right. Not only your elders, but a brother that is good at patience, he's going to be able to show you, wow, I lack something. <laughs> you might not have patience. You might just be the type of brother that jump off at the hinges for everything. Exactly, because people don't understand we all a body, so we all got something to bring. Towards you know, the body. Towards the table. I got one scripture. Yeah, Let's there you see, go. Uh, Proverbs 27 17. Uh -huh. It says, iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. You know, in the truth, that's like saying, you know, I don't need no friends in the truth. Right. You know, you right, don't right. need somebody to build you up. 
you know. But the scripture's telling us otherwise. Nah. It's yeah. it's telling us it's telling us <laughs> iron sharpeneth iron. There's one. There, there got to be more than just one there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it can't just be one deep and and oh okay, this is me. Right. You know what I mean? You're not gonna learn that way. You're not gonna get sharp yeah. that way. Right. Right. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna touch on those. Two, you finished with that? Go back to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Did you have something else? No, you got it. Okay, go back to Zephaniah 2 and 1 and read it again, and then we're going to read on down. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Uh-huh. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. And that's what, the, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And right. this is why uh, camps or the, the, uh, the New Testament calls churches. Right, right. You know what I mean? And it calls, which is gatherings. Mm -hmm. It says gather yourselves together. Right. That's what we're supposed to be doing, coming together and, 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 and going and getting taught, going to a, you, you know, you, our people, man, it's a trip because they do it with everything. Right. They want to do it with the white man. They want to do it with McDonald's. They want to do it with their job. But when it comes to really doing it with, for the most high in Christ, then it's like, oh, I don't need to do that. I don't need to come to a facility to learn. Well, you did it in school. Right. You did it for your job. You did it for your education. Right. I want to see these cats do it for Abercrombie and Fitch. They go to an uh, ab actual Abercrombie college. Wow. They all go out and meet in, out, out in the woods with their little tight pants and holy pants on, and they go learn how to fold clothes for Abercrombie. Wow. You know what I mean? Or they go learn how to model for Abercrombie, but they won't do it for to gather together for the truth. Right. No, you we don't I mean? need that. <laughs> right. <laughs> once there's accountability, once there's a, a correction, uh, right. once there's a leadership skills involved and things like that, the hardship. Right. It's like the scriptures say, by and by, for the word, they're offended. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not with that. Yeah. I, that part of the scriptures I'm going to ignore. Right. You know? Right. And uh, it, that makes you a cut and paste Israelite, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, there you go. I'm going to take, take this part of the scripture and I'm going to cut around the other one. Right. You know? And, and, and that goes, you know what, really, what that is, brother? That goes right back into the church mentality, religion mentality. Right. And religion mentality is that I, I want to go to church one day a week. But really, what did the Most High call us for? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I want y'all to get a, a few scriptures on that as we read down. Right. Well, the Most High, uh, I've called unto you, O men, uh, the, pa the flock of my pastors, men. Give, give me those real quick. Read, you read down okay. and let, 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 let him get that. Go ahead, read down. Zephaniah 2 and 2. Uh -huh. before, the, before the decree bring forth. Right, so it's telling us right. as we read in number 2 of the verse. <laughs> Because I'm like, how is brothers telling you this that you don't need a cab? It's telling us right. before the, the destruction, the, the destruction comes. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show was uh, when he talks about the chaff. Right. So, so people are clear mm -hmm. that he's clearly talking about a certain point in time. And there you go. Right? And, and this is not, we're not to gather, wait to gather together until the end, until this decree bring forth. Right. Uh, read, read on real quick. Uh -huh. Before the day pass as the chaff. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. That, that's where I want to pinpoint where it says, right. that before the day passes the chaff. There's a scripture in, uh, we're going to Luke 3, verse 17. Uh, there's a scripture that talks about this day uh, where the chaff is going to be involved. Mm -hmm. All right. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not um, right now. You know what I mean? That's the part that's not right now. So right. he's saying before that day. Right. right. There you go. Now, what day is the day of the chaff? I'm going to read this out of right. Luke 3 and 17. Mm -hmm. He says, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor mm -hmm. and will gather the wheat into the garner. But the chaff he will burn with uh, with fire unquenchable. Right. So <laughs> before the day of the chaff comes, right. before he got to burn you with fire unquenchable, he wants you to gather together as a nation not desired. Mm -hmm. See that? So that it, it's not for, oh, that's that's for that's for the end times. No, that's before <laughs> that day. Right. Before that decree brings forth. Right. And, th and then he, what, listen. Read Romans. Uh, I want you to go to Romans 13, 11, and then we're going to go to uh, 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 the first Thessalonians 5 and 1. You want to seek it 34? Yeah, hold that. Hold that. Okay. Hold that. We're going to jump back to that. Romans though. chapter 13, verse 11. Uh-huh. And that, knowing the time, that now is high time. Later's, uh, later is? That now is high time. Now is the time. Read. To wake out of sleep. Read. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. How do we know this? Right. How, is, how do we know that our salvation is nearer than we believe? Read. Verse 12. Uh -huh. The night is far spent. The, meaning that the darkness, it's coming to its peak. Right. Time of ages. The sun is rising. Right. Darkness is ending. And look at, when you look at the peak of darkness, 
We're going to go to the scriptures to tell us how we know the night is far spent. The signs are in the scriptures. Go ahead. The night is far spent. Uh -huh. The day is at hand. Read. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Right. And we're going to go back into that. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 verse 1. And then you're going to go to uh, 2 Ezra 9 and 6. Let's get out a few scriptures really quick. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1 and 2 Ezra 9 verse 6. Go there real quick. So first Thessalonians. Yeah, we're talking one. about this Zephaniah two and one, and we're talking about the day passing as a shaft that we supposed to come together before that day happens, right? right, right. So read that First Thessalonians five and one. First Thessalonians five and one. But the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Go ahead. Verse two, for yourselves know perfectly that in the day of the Most High. So cometh as a thief in the night. So this, the day that that final destruction is going to come as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. So Second Ezra, Matthew, we're going to find out the scriptures already prophesied what were the signs of those days. Right, right. Now, this is basic to us, mm -hmm. but a lot of brothers and sisters don't put the scripture and understand what does it mean before the shaft. Right, right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so read that where you're at. Second Ezra 9 and 6. Second Ezra is 96, and then you'll go to, I'm just trying to get out a few scriptures uh, really quick before this time winds down. Matthew 24, verse 5. Read that. Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 6. Yeah, and then you get Matthew 24, verse 5. Go ahead. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works. Right, so the scriptures is telling us <clears throat> that, the, he's telling us, he has, he, he shouldn't have to remind us. Right of the times and the seasons. Right. And that's what we're dealing with with a lot of these brothers. It's like, are, do we really have to go back here <laughs> to remind you what times we're in? Right. <laughs> like, because this is elementary. Right. Like, gather yourselves together before the decree. The decree, these things are leading up to it. Right. And the signs were given. Mm -hmm. Read on. Uh, Matthew chapter... Uh, no, read right, on. Ezra, okay. And wonders and... Highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works. Right. So we're at Second Ezra nine and six. Read it one more time. Read it clear. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works. Read and endings and effects and signs. So the endings, this time, this high time to wake up out of sleep. The day is far spent. The the endings and the times is is plain and simple. Right. The Most High told us. And he told us when you go to Matthew 24, verse 5. So once again, basic scriptures to go with Zephaniah 2 and 1 right. to show about the, the shaft. The before, we, we're supposed to be unified before. Right. We're supposed to have our spirit right before. Right. Not like when Jesus come next, you know, oh, I want to be right. If not, what separates you from the world? Right. You know, the world got that mentality that, okay, if there is a God, what I'll do is I'll pray on my deathbed. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right. When I'm in that bad situation where I'm going to be killed or something, then I'll. Oh, Jesus, I need you. Right. You right. I mean? That's the worldly mentality. Yeah. And that's the church mentality right. that uh, you can be on a uh, death row for, uh, you know, child molestation, murder. And then next year, you know, all you got to do is just say, I believe in Jesus. And then all that is forgiven. But you learned about the little boy that cried wolf in the world. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. So go ahead. Re, uh, now go to Matthew 24, verse Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them. And read it in English. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Right, so we know, that we know that's already happened. You got people calling themselves the Comforter, oh, yeah. a.k.a. the Holy Spirit. AKA the son of Christ, the son of God. You got you got people actually literally saying they're the resurrected Christ. You know whether it's the Puerto Rican guy from Puerto Rico or whether it's right, the right. David Koresh guys. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about now. I'm not talking about just uh, I'm not talking about literally David Koresh. Right. I'm talking about now in 2014 you have people saying they're Christ. Right. So these are simple prophecies. These, these are, th this is easy. Just look around. You got the Internet. Go look around at how many people is calling themselves Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know, or trying to puff themselves up as Christ, right. you know, or even or even the interpretation, the Messiah. 
There they're you trying, go. They're trying to be the deliverer. You know what I mean? That's that's where you get it within Israel, where they taking it to the next level. The, I've learned the truth. I, I, I know a couple of scriptures. I've been to some classes, and uh, I'm gonna be the next Moses. I'm gonna be the uh, right. <laughs> I'm gonna be the next Christ. I'm gonna be the one to deliver my people. No, you're gonna be a tool and help guide your people if you do things the right way. Right. You know what I mean? The the scriptures say you're not crowned unless you strive lawfully. Ooh. See that? So you, you got to go through the steps just like every other man. Moses didn't just even get to become just Moses, the deliverer. Right, you right. Know, he, he was a general in, in, uh, in, uh, in what do you call it, in Egypt before. Right, right. Which means he had to be a private uh, uh, right. trooper and all <laughs> right, that. Right, right, He had to go through ranks. Then and he, that's then, why the Mosai. Then with the Mosai, the Mosai had to, he had to touch him. He had right. to break him down. Exactly. And that's what it was when he was, when he was um, taken from Egypt, when he yeah. ran out of Egypt. Most I had to humble him. Right. Show him, okay, you used to live up here. Right. But you know what? What are you going to do for me? Right. And it tells you in the New Testament, he forsook the riches of, the, of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know? So uh, go ahead, read on. All right, verse 6. Hold on one second, brothers and sisters. We're live here. If y'all have any questions, comments, you can uh, text us. And we're talking about gathering together. For you brothers and sisters are, are, are in town or, or just barely watching us, we're talking about why it's necessary that we need to gather ourselves together. And to our YouTubers, uh, the, you know, that's making the we don't need to gather together comment or, uh, or, or no camp comment. We're showing that through the scriptures that the Most High ordained us to unify. He ordained us before the destruction, not when Christ comes back and then we get right. But now unifying, getting our minds right. Go ahead. Verse six. Uh -huh. And you shall hear of wars. And rumors of wars. Right, and there, there, there you can throw some of those images up there. Like, let's talk about these wars. Now, we're talking about Zephaniah 2 and 1, about the before the, the day or the shaft or the, the, the shaft is brought forth. Let's talk about these different revolutions. You understand? Let's talk about these different wars. You got Turkey, Egypt. You got, uh, you got Ukraine. These are... These are just a few today. Hmm. Now, you say, well, that always happened. I'm, I want you to do something if you think that always happened. Go look at, this is in Turkey, another uprising. Read it again. That there be what? And you shall hear of wars. You shall hear of what? Of wars. These uprisings are wars. Hmm. They're going up against the government, man. You understand? They got, you got Egypt, you got Turkey, you got Ukraine. You got all, uh, uh, and, and all these little countries throughout the world uprising and revolting against their government, overthrowing their government. Mm. If you go to Google and type in uprising, uprising countries and click on Wikipedia, it gives you a list from like the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> it tells you. And then as you wind down to 2010, brothers and sisters, I should have put I should have put it up. But as you wind down, OK, to 2010, that's when you see it starts getting more and more and more and more from 2010. So what, what we're saying is that look at the prophecies increase. Look at them increasing during time. So the scripture says that there be what? And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And you look at the wars and you look at these prophecies. When is it? When is it that, that before the shaft? After this, the scriptures is going to tell us Christ is going to destroy this place. He said this is the beginning of sorrows. Right. So this is the beginning before the shaft, before the fire hits this country, before the Most High builds the pride of these other countries up and they finally turn their back on America. And America is, uh, not, uh, did, listen, brothers and sisters, don't be deceived. And yeah, keep scrolling through these scroll, uh, slowly because look at these different, where is this at? Beirut. In Lebanon. We're just going through different wars and rumors of wars. Hmm. You understand? Uh -huh. look, look at before Christ comes back and destroys America. And what I was going to say was, don't think... Don't listen to these cats talking about uh, Babylon is, is over there in Iraq. Iraq is destroyed. Iraq is rude. Right. They ain't been a world power for 3,000 years. Yeah, let's stop that. <laughs> America is the greatest kingdom as of now, and there is no power. That's why Russia got to, like, flex their, they got to flex their legs and be like, you know what? We can burn down America. Right. 
Because why? They trying to stand up to Big Daddy, the big boy, mm. right? But the only one that's going to bring the shaft and, and, and ordain the destruction, the fire is the most high, right? So the scripture says that, read on. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Right, read. See that ye be not troubled. And the most high said, be not troubled. Go back to Zephaniah 2 and 1 as he's reading on. For all these things must come to pass. These wars, these revolutions, these uprisings, they must come to pass. And this is in Turkey, right? But the end is not yet. The end is not yet. Read, read verse 2. Zephaniah 2 and 2. Read. Before the decree bring forth. Before. So the scriptures is giving us the knowledge of when the decree is close. The scriptures is telling us. That's why it said in 2 Ezra, the endings, we'll go back there real quick. Go back to 2 Ezra. 2 Ezra chapter 9 verse 6. Read. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings uh -huh. and wonders and powerful works. Read. And endings. And, and what? And endings. And what? Endings. And what? Endings. The end is not yet, but this is the beginning of the end before the shaft, before the Most High gives them the shaft. <laughs> right? Yeah. You understand that? Now read on back on in Matthews. Read. All right, verse 7. Uh-huh. For nation shall rise against nation. And this is what we're talking about, nation against nation. Wars and rumors of wars, right? Read. And kingdom against kingdom. Read. And there shall be famines and pestilences. Right. Now, when we deal with pestilence, a lot of people think pestilence mm -hmm. is, is uh, the or famine, excuse me, the famine is uh, just not having food. Right. But how about genetically modified food? Right. Do, they, do we understand that America doesn't have food? Right. No, we're, we're undernourished, but we're eating. You know what I mean? We're the fattest nation, but we're undernourished what? because the right. food don't have no nourishment in it. There you go. You know what I mean? The, the, the GMO foods don't have no vitamins. Right. You know what I mean? It's just filler. <laughs> you, you eat styrofoam. There you go. Right, right, <laughs> right. exactly. And this is, this, is, this, is, this is the prophecies coming to pass. So I say to you, brothers, young minded in the spirit, you lack, you err not knowing the scripture. You err not knowing the scripture. Why? Because the scriptures is telling us before the final burning of this country, we supposed to be coming together. Right. And that's what the most high is telling us. Hold that and go to, uh, uh, yeah, keep, keep showing that, uh, uh, keep showing those because this is the famine. Right. You're having to eat genetically modified foods. That's not real foods. You have, we, they have to create these foods because America is lacking food. It is lacking the essential things. And that's what you're going to be eating sooner or later. Right? Go ahead, read on. Go ahead, read okay. on in Matthew. All right, verse, um, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So we know we're, we're talking about the famine. This is a famine to have to eat these genetically modified foods. That ain't real food. Because if you imagine if they weren't creating these, uh, creating these in, 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 in the laboratory, mm. what would happen? No. We wouldn't have nothing. No. You know, because a lot of these foods are genetically modified. So it said famine and said earth. It said what? And earthquakes in diverse places. R right. So going to that prophecy, the most I showing us. What, look, look at China. Look at look at all these kingdoms and, and nations that are being not just this is not like in 1987. Like we're making like prophecies in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the last few months. Right. You understand? The, and, and this is not rocket science. You don't it, before you need to you. You know, the lack of faith. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, those Bible guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been happening since the beginning of time. Oh, really? Well, go look at the statistics of how the earthquakes and famines and pestilence have increased. You understand? Uh, and when it says pestilence, when it says pestilence, what do you think Fu Fukushima was, was about? What do you all, think? All these, all the, the pictures he showed with the whales, you know, the, those uh, killer whales beached. Yeah. Uh, the, the millions of fishes. Oh, yeah. Going to the dead. Fukushima, uh, going to the pestilent, pestilent one, sister. 
this is what this is this is uh wow Fukushima radiation right it, but it, this is uh I'm trying to figure out what part of the country is this on the left side you got Japan and it's coming from Japan right but it's going to California yeah it's coming over all the way to California South America right L look at Take look at this this program. is the radiation now hold that and go to Revelations eight Revelations eight and eleven and let's ask ourselves. If this is not the time to gather ourselves together, right. <laughs> then when is? Right. Then when is? Read that, Revelation 8 and 11. Revelation chapter 8, verse 11. Uh -huh. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Uh -huh. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And, 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 this is, and we're not going to go through the whole Revelations breakdown. But one of the prophecies was that the Most High would send these angels and they would bring this Wormwood. Mm. That Wormwood is bitterness. Yeah. That word word is destruction. Oh, yeah. you know, it's a, a little deeper than that too. Is uh, uh -huh. wormwood? You know, just to add to what you're saying, but uh, the wormwood is a is a key ingredient in a drink they used to call absinthe. Mm. And you would you put too much of that with some laudanum, and you you drink that, and it would actually make you go crazy after a while. So it, it would rot your brain. It would actually eat away chunks of your brain. So wow. you're drinking this water, that water is becoming like wormwood. It's, it's going to start driving you crazy. Wow. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, if this is not the time for Zephaniah 2 and 1, gather yourselves together, when is it? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I know what they're waiting for. Let's go to, hold that where you at. Where, where did I ask you to go? Where did I ask you to go? That was a... Uh, where are you at right now? Revelation 8. We're going to finish that, but go to Matthew 16, verse 28. 16 and 28? Yeah, Matthew 16, verse 28. Matthew chapter 16. Maybe this is what they're waiting for. In verse 28. Read, read that. Check this out. Read. Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. They, they want to get right when Jesus comes. <laughs> well, guess what? Christ is looking at us now. He's, he wants to see us working <laughs> towards that goal. He says that we're in a race. Should they misunderstand that scripture? That just means you ain't going to get killed until Christ do it himself. Right, right. Yeah. Hey, but that's, <laughs> so he, that's the point. Right. That's the point. They're waiting for Christ to kill them. Right. They're waiting for Christ to put, get them <laughs> instead of right now working on that inward man. So they got the, they got the 90s woman mentality, you know, the, the, the 2000 black woman mentality. Right. And they can't no man tell me nothing. You know what I mean? Right, you right. ain't Christ. You ain't Jesus. Right, you know right. I mean? Instead of listening to these scriptures. Yeah. And the scriptures is warning us. And that's why uh, we, we got a 15 minutes left. Let's go back to Revelations 8 and 11. Let's finish that up. Romans 8 and 11. Revelations 8 and 11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Uh -huh. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Uh -huh. And many men died of the waters. And many what? And many men died. Don't put that Fukushima up there. Tell me that's not a third of the waters. Right, th that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and put that... Go ahead and put that Fukushima, that, that map up there. Look at how much the most high. Now, I got a, I, here's another one. In these scriptures, go to Revelation 7 and let's read. Check this out. Leave that up there, sister. And then we're going to go to the, these forsaken, not the assemblies. Go ahead. Re Re go to Revelation 7. What verse is it? Go to one, one real quick. Revelation 7 and 1. And read quick. Leave this up here. Read. And after these things, I saw four angel, angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Read. Holding the four winds of the earth. Read. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Read. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. Read on. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth. So these angels, we're finding out, we're going to hurt the earth. Read. And the sea. And the what? And the sea. Now check out how these prophecies are coming to pass. Read. Verse 3. Uh -huh. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Guess what? While you're sitting at home and you're on your ass, ain't doing nothing for the Most High in Christ, ain't raising your people, ain't teaching your people, ain't, ain't, ain't raising your mind state, the Most High is sealing his servants. And he said he's doing it now. You better take a look at these prophecies and wake up. He's saying don't hurt the earth or the sea till what? Nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God. So what we are seeing is the prophecies coming to pass. The Most High is, 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 is fulfilling these prophecies. The earthquakes, the famines, the pestilence, the, the seas being destroyed. The animals dying. Look at this, man. Look at 
Look at the pestilence that the Most High is bringing on the, on the earth. But remember, the Most High said, this is the beginning of the end because the shaft is the end. That's the end. But look, look at what's happening, man. That's the pestilence. Go back to Matthews. Go back to Matthews, where you left off. Read. Matthew chapter 24, verse 8. Read. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Read. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Right. So all these are the beginning of sorrows. So are we going to wait? Wait. Uh, and that's birds. Those birds. And uh, a lot of people seen that, too. A lot of birds just fell out the sky and start dying. This is the pestilence, right? Go to Hebrews 10, verse 25. So this is what this is what the Most High is showing us as, as she go through the rest of these images on the pestilence, on the prophecies Hebrews coming 10, to pass. Right? Hebrews 10, verse 25, really quick. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And then you're going to go to Matthews 18, 19. Read. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. No, you know what? Let's read 24 really quick. Verse 24. Uh-huh. And let us consider one another. That is what? Consider one another. And that's the first thing. They don't want to unify because they don't want to consider each other. Right. They don't want to have to work for the next man. They don't want to have to be there for their brother. Like Christ said, there's no greater thing that he, than he laid down his life for his brother. And they don't want that. Right, right. What they want is easy. Christ come back, they get beamed up. That's not going to happen, brothers and sisters. Right, right. We have to work. The scriptures tell you faith without works is dead. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what's so easy about it is they get to hop up whenever they feel like it and decide to stand up for the truth. Right. And then sit down the rest of the time while everybody else is still working. Right. You know what I mean? They're, they're forgetting the scripture said, uh, Christ said, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Right. You know what I mean? He wasn't, he wasn't sitting around sleeping all the time. He was, right. He was always moving. Right, right. You know what I mean? Always having to be there for his brother. Right, always, right. always had to be on call. But brothers don't want to be on call. They, no. want, they want to be, they want, they want to call themselves. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's that church mentality. I want to go ahead and clock in on Sundays and then uh, put my, you know, Friday night, put my, put my. Uh, yeah. uh, punch the card. Yeah, punch, punch the punch card, the right? Card. <laughs> punch card, Israelites. Pu uh, you know, like, like, like they used to call me when I was coming up, going to school, going to class, part time. Um, Weekend warriors. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I wasn't, I wasn't fully in there yet until I dedicated myself, right? Right, right. I was a weekend warrior. And that's what a lot of these brothers and sisters don't, uh, a lot, excuse me, not sisters, because to the sisters, the brothers is real diligent. Right. They real vigorous to tell them you right. got to be right and you got to be in order. But when it comes to them, it's like, oh, brother, you not Christ, brother. That, but the funny thing is, that's what they women do the same thing to them, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you can't live by an example, guess what? Christ ain't going to bless you with that. Right. He ain't going to bless you with a household or with your wife and your children in order. Right. And that's what a lot of these young brothers and sisters don't, un young brothers don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, these are the same ones you see on Facebook later on after they were on fire for the truth. They crying because they woman did the same thing they do to the yeah. truth. You know what I mean? Left them because she didn't want to be a full time Israelite. Right. You know what I mean? Then they on the then then their their whole fire dwindled down. Right. You know what I mean? Because they they was about the truth so they could show her something. Right. You know what I mean? But now she left and so they sitting at home crying by themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's scary because yeah. a lot of these cats that there a lot of these brothers that that zeal is like that right. that double minded zeal is they're the ones trying to trying to actually teach people yeah. but really not committed themselves. Right. You know, and it's scary because this is not something to play with. Yeah. You, you brothers, we, we have to be accountable. You know what I mean? I know I'm going to be accountable. I have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful. Right. You know, it's not a game. And, and a lot of brothers, they get the knowledge and think it's, it's like now, like when you was a 5%er or a Muslim or you were, you was uh, of the Moorish, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> you was a, you, you know how we did in the world, we, you was a crip of blood, you was, and that's what our people are good for. One week they this, next week they that. They're never committed. Yeah. They're never committed, man. So this, the Most High wants our, you brothers, you men, Ezekiel 34, verse 31, you got it? Did y'all let that go already? I told y'all to hold it, man. Ezekiel 34, verse uh, 31, really quick. Ezekiel 34 and 31. Read. And ye my flock, the flock of my pastor are men. Yeah, yeah, you men are supposed to be standing up, getting this knowledge, learning it. You understand? The most I want y'all to learn this knowledge, go to a camp, and learn how to follow 
learn how to, because a lot of you brothers had, didn't grow up with a daddy. You didn't grow up with, with a leader in your house. You grew up with mama. That's why they always yelling that on, on their R&B songs. And every time you would accept the reward, you talking about, mama, thank you. <laughs> but daddy, like, the nigga wasn't there. The nigga, nigga, you weren't, nigga, you weren't there, daddy. <laughs> right? But then you never learned yourself how to be a man. So guess what? Go to a camp and learn how to be a man. That way you can guide your household correctly. Get off your ass off the internet, off of YouTube, and commit yourself to a body, whether, whatever state it's in. And, 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 and let those brothers show you how to guide your house, your kids, yourself, your suicidal tendencies, your, you, can't, your, your, you can't live without weed mentality. That's what a camp is going to do. It's going to teach you how to strengthen you. There's many brothers that came to camp that had drug problems, drug issues. And you know what we did? Brother, what the hell are you doing with those drugs? Took the drugs, dumped them in the toilet. Took the cigarettes, dumped them in the toilet. You know what I mean? And helping that brother fight those demons. Yeah. But the cats that's talking about, oh, yeah, we don't need a camp. It's those same cats that's at home getting high, popping pills, talking about, oh, I'm an Israelite. Right. <laughs> you an Israelite? Really? Right. Really? Read. And ye my flock, the flock of my pastor are men. Read. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. You're, you're supposed to be standing up. You want to point the finger at the black woman. Oh, you're, you're a B-I-T-C-H, you're a whore. But guess what? Won't you stand up and do something? You know what I mean? Won't we stand up, right? Uh -huh. We always want, and you want to blame it on the white man. You want to ye yell in at Esau. We know Esau. Okay, Esau is the evil deceiver. We know that. It, it, brother, Esau's not the problem. You know who the problem is? Lazy ass Israelites that don't want to have a backbone and get up and stand for righteousness and fight for their people. That's the ones that is the problem. The most I said, gather us together. Esau is going to be the wicked and they're going to do their wickedness. But could we do some righteousness? Could we stand for good? And that's where the scripture in John 4 and 1, one of my favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 4 and 1, he says, go through the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and see if you can find a man, one that executed judgment and righteousness. Go look for those brothers. But no, they're at home and typing, talking about, guess what? Uh, you, they, <laughs> you don't need a camp. <laughs> like, like kids, like children, man. Yeah, right. So we, where are we at? That was Ezekiel 34, 31. Where are you at? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Read it. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love. How am I going to provoke you to love if I'm not by you? To provoke somebody to love, he has to see a, that within me. Right. To be able to say, man, I'm watching this man's actions right. daily. When they looked at Christ, they see his actions and said, wow, he has a lot of love, right. patience, compassion. Why? Because when these people are, 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 are going and throbbing against him and he's still tired and he had no place to lay his head. But guess what? He was still teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That how else would they have known that about Christ if they just met him at the seashore once a week? Right. <laughs> came, when, came when the fish was getting served. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. Read on. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love. And to good works. Read. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves what together. What does the Bible say? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. If you don't know the word assembling, then go look it up. <laughs> it means exactly what we do. What we, you know how we church? Church yeah. is assembling. Yeah. We gather. Yeah. So the scriptures is specifically telling us don't forsake the assembly. But as you read up, it's telling us why. Because you're not going to learn these essential things that you need in you. Right. Right. You look at that word assembling. Uh, you use that when you're, when you're building something. You know mm. what I mean? Assembly, wow. assembly required. You got to build. You know what I mean? How are you going to build with one piece? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What, what, what will you build with one piece? You understand? Yeah. You got to see these things. These, these words the scriptures are using are important because they require more than one. And assembling is a building. It's a building. Uh, it's an it's a assemblage of parts. You know, you got to see these things because the, the most high is not playing with you people. 
He's not he's not telling you, hey, go ahead and do things on your own. He said assemble. That means you got to build. Right. You, that thing that means that some growth, some some product has to be made. Mm -hmm. And and that's this nation. Right. You, you can't build a nation with one person. You're not going to build a nation with one guy on a keyboard. Mm -hmm. You're going to build a nation by people actually hitting the streets, it, uh, people actually being around each other, building one another. There you go. There you go. Let's. We got five minutes, so let's get to a few more. Psalms 133 and 1. Finish real Psalms 133. Oh, I'm sorry. Finish real quick. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, uh -huh. as the matter of some is. Right. Read. But, but exhorting one another. Right. Read. And so much the more. As ye see the day approaching. Wait a minute. As the day is already upon us. As ye see the day approaching. As the chaff is already here. As you see the day approaching. Right. As we see the day approaching, we're supposed to come together. He Psalms said, 20, 33 and 1. I just want to point sorry. this out. He, want, he wants us to... Uh, Asse uh, assemble ourselves together, right? Right. And exhort one another. He didn't say, have, wait till Christ come and exhort you. There you go. You know what I mean? There you oh, go. Christ is going to come down and perfect all that. Uh -huh. no, no, he said, he said, exhort one another. You, you exhort him. He exhorts this one because Christ ain't coming down to micromanage. That's supposed to be all taken care of when he gets here. Mm -hmm. That's why Christ, uh, Paul said he wanted to present people blameless. Right. He had to do that work before Christ got here. Right. Yeah. Psalms 133 and 1. And Psalms 133 and 1. We're going to go to Matthews. Mm -hmm. Matthew uh, 20 and verse 1. Go ahead. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. To dwell together in discord. In unity. Well, I'm doing my own thing, dog. In, in unity. You do your thing. In unity. I do my thing. In unity. In unity. And, th and, th and this, is, this is a strong one, too, because um, the Most High is showing us that we have to have unity. Yeah. All the discord amongst Israel and all the, uh, you know, brothers puffed up because they wanted to. They, they, <laughs> They don't understand, and, and they can't, they're not willing to love their people. Right. You know what I mean? Just on this, just on this. No, brother, you got it wrong. It's over. Brother, we all see through a glass darkly. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> right? We all see through a glass darkly. So the clarification will come if we had unity. Right. If we can sit down amongst each other, and this is a, a, lot, a lot of brothers' problem, is they, they don't want to sit down amongst their reason in the scriptures. Right. They just want to be right. They just want to be right <laughs> to be able. We already know we came out of the lies. Right. But now we should be able to sit down and reason amongst the scriptures like the Most High said. Where you at? Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Read Ecclesiastes that. 4 and 9. Read. Two are better than one. Read it again. Two are better than and one. this is the ISBHPKs. Uh, this is our motto. motto. <laughs> Two are better than one. I know I need a brother. I know I need that because a brother was there for me to show me the love of Christ. He, he showed me the example. Many brothers. Go ahead. Two are better than one. Read. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Read. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Right. And there's where you uh, lack understanding is that the Most High ordained it that way. Two are better than one. Right. He ordained it for us to be in twos and threes when you go into Matthew. We're not going to be able to hit on those, but the Most High, he already ordained that, that when we go out, he even said if you have a problem with a brother, he said go to that brother, and if he, he don't receive you in Matthew 18, go take another brother. Right. And then if he don't receive you, he don't receive y'all, then go take him to the congregation. Right. Why? Because, read it again. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Right. So go go from there. Go to the Matthews. Go to the Matthews uh, 18. Th uh, thank you, Sister Ali Ashabai. She said, beautiful show. I'm going to Thank you. Uh, huh? I'm going to continue on that. Yeah, finish it up. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Right. But woe to him that is alone. Right. When right. he falleth, for he hath not another to help him. Right. And brothers and sisters, uh, we don't want to go over. Uh, you know, we were touching on this Zephaniah 2 and 1 and, and uh, this unity. And that's what we're trying to establish and understand that uh, we got to come together as a nation. We thank you all for tuning in. We'd like to say shalom. Shalom. shalom.